Please be to say that when we talk about sentences, it's very important as most of you, whether you are going to IFT or GIJ or uh, I mean IJ or IL, you are still going to do writing a lot. You know, you are uh, more or less all of you are writers. And so you really have to take a critical look at your writing, especially if you are going to write a letter in English or anything. Some of these things you might be uh, complacent and you think that you've done the right thing, but it comes out that you've missed a whole lot. Okay, so please be mindful of that. And then secondly to um, when I checked the feedback from, your, from the quiz you did, I also noticed that some of you made assumptions. In exams, you don't have to assume. If not, you will get everything wrong. And some of you did that. Instead of, I think you didn't read an instruction and you didn't listen to my audio. If you had, you wouldn't have missed um, these things. Some of you rather gave me uh, the meaning in English, which is in so. Some of you also wrote questions, which is in so. Rearrange. So following instructions in exams is very important. You might have learned, but if you don't follow instructions, you will get a whole lot of things wrong. And I think some of you two were trying to answer, okay, which, is, which shouldn't be the case. The instruction says you should rearrange the sentences. So that should be it. Don't assume and don't and then what you see, I know there was, a, I think, three or four people. I think you were female, so je me suis marié eh, l'année dernière. You added another E to marié because you think it's female. But you shouldn't assume. What you see is what you have to replicate. Okay? So please be mindful of those things. It cuts across not only my course, but all the other courses. Read instructions, understand the instruction, and answer the question directly. Don't beat about the bush or don't try to read meanings into the, uh, the questions. Okay. So I hope you are all okay. Don't worry at all. I'm still reviewing. If you have not seen any changes in your mind, it's because maybe genuinely you are wrong. But I'm still reviewing. There are lots of them, about 130 plus responses. So I'm still reviewing them. Are we okay? Okay. You had you were what? Second phase. Yes. Yes. It wasn't added to a grade. I've not really, I've not summarized every grade. And besides, it's not like I'm going to use all the grades for the cumulative record at the end. We are going to do select selection of the best performances. And you have done five. Okay, you are yet to do the fifth one. Okay, so we'll select about three or so for the final cumulative record for your continuous assessment. So don't worry, okay? All right, are we good? All right. So finally, we have come to the end or we are gradually getting to the end of the, why? <laughs> Do you have anything to say? Okay. And you can see that the exuberance is so charming. All right. So um, today is just a continuation of what we did last week. And I want to us to take about 30 to 45 minutes to do that. And afterwards, I will take you through what we have learned from week one to week five. So we have to pay rapt attention. And then afterwards, I'm going to tell you what to expect in the exams. Not verbatimly, but like what you, you should expect. Okay, so this is what we are going to do today. So let's all pay attention. If you have any questions, any concerns, clarifications, additions, or subtractions, you do so in the course of the lesson.
Donc aujourd'hui, on va faire une continuation de ce qu'on a fait la semaine passée, se présenter. La semaine passée, on a pu commencer à présenter en français. Donc si, par exemple, je te rencontre aujourd'hui et je ne te connais pas, et puis je te demande, euh, présentez-vous, bien présente-toi. Il faut d'abord me dire votre nom en français, par exemple, votre âge, d'où venez-vous, et puis euh, ce que vous aimez faire, ce que vous n'aimez pas faire, si vous êtes étudiant ou bien euh, un travailleur, par exemple. Ce sont des informations essentielles euh, qu'on doit avoir quand on fait une présentation, ou bien euh, euh, si vous voulez se présenter. OK? So, what I'm basically saying is that if you want to introduce yourself, maybe I've met you today, I don't know you, and I want to know you, okay, whether you or somebody else, there are basic information that we need to know. Definitely your name, your age, where you come from, okay, where you stay, what you do, whether you're a student, or anything that is very vital for us to know about yourself. That's basically that. Okay, so last week we practiced how to say this and some of the recurrent expressions you will see. For instance, if I want to say my name, okay, how do we say that in French, my lady? Je m'appelle Gifty. Je m'appelle Gifty. Or if you don't say m'appelle from s'appeler, from the verb appeler, what will you say? Je suis. Je suis. Okay, Anita. Or, all right, so you see, my number, Caleb. So, my number, it's not Bruna, ah, uh, Jemenom, yes. I was speaking the Cote d'Ivoire one. Jemenom, Caleb. <laughs> people, by the time I leave you, I'll have a bigger chief. <laughs> okay, so je me nom, okay, or if you want to say only your first name, je, je me prénom, okay, uh, maybe Samuel, Mark, Luke, all right, so these are some of the expressions you will see. And then if you want to say your age, how would you say that? Sure. As you completed, Jeff Ben Never. Jeff Never. Very good. So I, I like the fact that you remember the expression. You didn't try to do a literal translation from English where you will say Je suis Ben Never. Because we learned that if you want to express your age in French, we don't use être, we use avoir. Okay, so Jeff Ben Never. Ou bien j'ai 30 ans. Okay. So these are some of the expressions. And if you want to say you come from uh, Koforidia or wherever you come from, how will you say it? Oh, smiles, more. <laughs> That's what I just gave you a, a brief. Name. Who wants to help us? Je viens de venir de, come from, venir. So you use the expression venir de, je viens de, all right? Okay, so these are some of the expressions we learned. Okay, so we are just going to do a recap, okay? But uh, in the form of what? Reading. So I'm going to give the mic to some of you to read. Oh, yes, we have done that already last week. So this is just like a recap. Get to, you know, today is basically about um, developing or, you know, mastering our oral word competency, how to read in French, you know, getting some of the vocabulary, the spelling, and all that. Okay, it's not anything new because we have done all that it takes last week. All right. Don't come that be no, no objective. 
Et pour le plan, nous avons les objectifs, l'introduction et puis lecture 1. Il s'agit de se présenter, lecture de se présenter. C'est-à-dire, on va lire aujourd'hui, d'accord? Savoir lire en français. Et puis, il y a des questions et la conclusion et des références à la fin. Donc, pour les objectifs, nous, vou euh, nous voulons atteindre ces objectifs à la fin de ce cours. Donc, l'objectif est, il s'agit de savoir lire des lectures de compréhension par rapport à ces présentés, c'est-à-dire how to read in French. OK, we, are, we want to know how to read, articulate words in French. Et puis, savoir répondre aux questions de compréhension sur ces présentés. If you want to answer que comprehension questions, there is a style. You don't use phrases or clauses. Use, you use a full sentence to what? Answer comprehension questions just, just like we learned last week. Unless in a particular case, the question asks you to list some items or itinerary, I don't know, then you do so. But in a case where it's a full question, you have to what? Make sure you answer with a sentence. Donc, quand on dit euh, « c'est présenté », nous, 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 euh, nous savons ce que c'est que c'est présenté. Donc, on, comme j'ai déjà dit, on va lire et puis ça va répondre aux questions. Et puis, des mots-clés, comment écrire ou bien l'orthographe des mots-clés, « how to write ». Spelling is very important in French. OK? Spelling is very important, especially with accents. And The quiz four even gave you out that some of you, you have not really, I think you take for granted accents in French. The moment a word misses an accent and that word has to have an accent and you miss it, it's totally wrong. Very, very wrong. There's no consideration because it gives a different meaning or it makes the word non-existent in the language. So accents are very important. So anytime you see a word or you are learning a word in French or you are reading, make sure you take note of their accent. They are not for decoration, but they are for what? They make a part of what? The spelling, and it's very important. So you need to know the different types of accents we have and not take them for granted. Are we okay? So we have a little reading here, okay? It's actually um, quite long, okay? Not very long, but very simple, so don't worry. So we are going to take it paragraph by paragraph. I'm going to give the microphone to um, any of you. Or if you want to volunteer, I'm ready. So um, the reading or comprehension one is about somebody who is introducing himself to us. So who wants to read the first paragraph for us? Very short, short sentences in there. OK. Je ne vois pas Perry Bernard. Pierre. Pierre Bernard. 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 J'ai 20 ans. J'ai 20 ans. Je suis Marie. 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 Je suis Berge. Je habite à Paris. J'habite à Paris. Je suis. In intermittent. Intermittent. Okay, so I'm going to read, all right? And then somebody should repeat. Or somebody can, I want somebody who can do that for me before I read. Okay. Is David in class? I know there are about two Davids here. David, where is David? Hey, today the person doesn't want to own up. Oh, William. Okay, William wants to read. Je m'appelle Pierre Bénard, il y a 20 ans. Je suis marié, je suis belge, j'habite à Paris, je suis intermittent du spectacle, je suis né le 21 décembre 2000. 
c'est ça. Vous voulez le lire encore Je m'appelle Pierre Bernard, j'ai 20 ans, je suis marié, je suis belge, j'habite à Paris, je suis intermittent du spectacle. Je suis né le 21 décembre 2000. So, you know, in French, articulation of words are very important. You don't read it as if it were in English. Okay, so uh, I think all of you have tried, even the first person tried, okay? Yes, yeah, so je m'appelle Pierre Bernard, j'ai 20 ans, je suis marié, je suis belge, j'habite à Paris, je suis intermittent du spectacle, je suis né le 21 décembre 2000. So you want to know the meaning? So somebody should tell us, je m'appelle uh, Pierre Bernard, what does it mean? As simple as that. J'ai 20 ans. What does it mean? Je, euh, je suis marié. Je suis belge. Um, yes. Okay, like somebody who comes from Belgium, okay? Or who is a native of Belgium. All right. So j'habite à Paris. Or I stay, at, I stay in Paris or I live in Paris. Okay. Je suis intermittent du spectacle. That's what you are asking me. So look for it. You, did, you watched the videos, right? So you should have looked for it. I'm not telling you. You have to tell me now. Yes, that's why we are in class today to discuss. Intermittent du spectacle, c'est qui ça? I'm not telling you, so it's your homework. And then what? The last one was, was je suis né le 21 décembre 2000. 2000. Okay, what, what does it mean? Nancy, what does it mean? Yes. Je suis né le 21 décembre 2000. What does it mean? And so say it, say, say the meaning. Je suis né le 21 décembre 2000. Je suis né. Uh, what does it mean? It's born. Okay. You can either say my date of birth is 21st December 2000 or I was born on 21st December um, 2000. Okay. The next paragraph. Um, I'm trying to remember the names. Maswell. It's Maswell. For Subaiden here. Oh, Maswell. Uh, the second Maswell. Hey, you don't want to own up. Yesterday, I went through the name vigorously, so I'm going to mention your names. J'aime danser et sortir avec des amis. J'aime danser et sortir avec des amis. J'ai fait du judo. Je lis surtout de mangas. Je lis surtout de man de manga. Je n'aime pas beaucoup. Okay. okay, so je sorti de mang. Je n'aime pas beaucoup le roman. De manga. Je n'aime pas beaucoup le roman. J'aime bien jouer au carte et ou au carte et ou domino. J'adore passer du temps en famille. Je temps en famille. Du temps en famille. Ah, okay. Anybody else? Yes. Okay. Um, I'm trying to remember the names. Sheila Kitty. Yeah, I know her. Hey, Sheila. J'aime danser et sortir avec des amis. Je fais du judo. Je lis surtout des mangas. Je n'aime pas 
je n'aime pas beaucoup les romans. J'aime bien jouer aux cartes et aux dominos. J'adore passer du temps en famille. Very good. Anybody else? You don't want to nominate yourself. <laughs> yes? Okay, that's a very good question. And um, she asked where, where, why Belge is in small b and not capital B. In English, if you are describing or you are um, des des uh, designating the, what is it, where somebody is coming from, you capitalize the word. But in French, it's the opposite. It's considered as a common noun. So you don't uh, write capital B or capital G, like, like uh, what is it? Especially when it says je suis belge, okay? It becomes a small b instead of a capital B in English. Okay, you understand? Yeah, the same as Ghanaian, je suis Ghanaian, it should be small g, small f, je suis Française or Français. You want to ask a question? Um, please, uh, with the... Uh, please, um, if you are writing about yourself and then you want to write your age, is it acceptable to write your age in figures, not in words? Yes, you can write it in words and then you can write it in figures. Okay. Or you can write it in figures, but normally there are some ways of writing, especially when it comes to lessons. Is that you write them in words, especially essays. Normally, we write figures in words, okay. But for casual writing, this is you can write it in fig uh, in figures, okay. But if you were to be a proper essay, you should write it in words and maybe into brackets. You write a figure, okay. I want this thing to stay, so you can read right, or you want the slideshow. It's visible, right? Yes. So. Anybody else to, we understand the second paragraph, do we? Yes. Mm. Who can do the translation for us, the whole paragraph? Yes, ask. Yes. I is married, how? How? <laughs> Honestly, some people marry at 18. You know, it is only in Ghana here or in this part of Africa where our lives are delayed like that, especially when you are schooling. When you go abroad, even at the age of 21, 22, they are done with university, they have a proper job, they are married. Okay, when you go outside, what I know, they marry early, especially when the person is serious. Okay, all right, so it's possible because if it is 2000, it's 23. The person is 23 right now. It's possible. Even here in Ghana, there are some people who are married at 23. Yes. Okay. So, Jen don't say, sorti avec des amis. Simple, right? I like to dance or I love dancing and going out with my friends. Okay. Je fais du judo. Judo is a, a kind of game. Go and look for it. It's a very interesting game. Okay. Yes. A game fight, yes, I know it's a fight. It, you know that kind of Asian, yes, uh, um, fighting, they, they consider it as a uh, what game, not necessarily like, you know, the game that you are thinking of, okay? Yes, it's, that's the word, okay? Like Taekwondo and the rest, okay? Je lis you to the manga. Do you know what manga is? Yes, tell us. Yeah, so, yeah, manga, manga, manga is like comic book, yeah, the Japanese comic books, it has pictures, and yeah, so, thank you. I want you to, why, why were you laughing? <laughs> okay, so, um, and then, je n'aime pas beaucoup les romans, it's simple, right? 
And the Roman here is not Roman, so okay, novels, all right. Okay, so I don't like I don't like what novels too much. J'aime bien, uh, j'aime bien jouer aux cartes et aux domino. Okay, I like playing cards, okay, like spa, you know. And then domino, you know what domino is? Oh, yes, we want, to, <laughs> we want you to educate us. So, dominoes are, is a game. Yes, we have tiles that have numbers on it. So, you arrange the numbers and then you, you play it like that. Yeah. Okay, so that's basically that. And j'adore passer du temps en famille. Okay. I like what spending time with family or with my family. And then the third paragraph. Yes, uh, third paragraph. Who wants to um, read for us? Or you want me to mention names? Okay. Uh, uh, is it Kojo? Kojo Agbo or Agbono? Who is Kojo? Who? The classroom. Ah, that's his name. Ah, okay. Okay, now who else? Yes. So, avant, j'habitais à Bruxelles. You know where Bruxelles is? Yes. So, you see, the person says uh, he is Belgian and he comes from Belgium. So, definitely, maybe he said previously he was staying at what? Well, in, in Brussels. All right, now he's what? He's in Paris. Okay, so somebody should conclude the paragraph for us, please. Um, is Rita here in this class? Oh, no, Rita. Hey, Rita, I think you are Rita, right? <laughs> okay, who else wants to read? Avant, j'habitais à Bruxelles. J'allais souvent au pop avec mes collègues. J'aimais bien passer du temps avec, avec eux. Je pouvais parler toute la nuit. Mais maintenant, c'est fini. Je suis marié. Je reste chez moi le samedi soir et je regarde la télé. Anyone else? I think it, you, you had everything right. If you really understood this, it's a very interesting uh, story about a married man. Okay, in the past, he could go out and, you know, sit shut throughout the night. But now, it's finished for him. He can't go out like he used to because he's married, okay, and he has to spend the weekend, especially Saturday weekend, okay, in the house watching TV. You know, when you're married, you're kind of restricted a bit, isn't it? <laughs> you can't do the things you do. All right, so, j'allais souvent au pub avec mes, uh, mes collègues. Okay, going to the club or, you know, pub with their friends. J'aimais passer bien du temps avec eux, okay? He likes to uh, spend time with them. Je pouvais parler toute la nuit, just as I said. Uh, he can talk throughout the night, chit chat, okay, talk throughout the night. Mais maintenant c'est fini for now, or oh, but now it's finished. Je suis marié, I'm married. Je reste chez moi le, le samedi soir. Okay, rester chez toi. It means like to stay at home, okay? Okay, on Saturday, okay, Saturday night, je regarde la télé. I watch TV, okay? And then the last paragraph. Je pense que je dois faire un régime. What does it mean? In French, we call something faux ami, false friends or false cognates. Okay, there are some words that look like English words, but the meaning that they, uh, it has in English is totally different from the meaning it has in French. 
Okay, being that you know that English uh, is a very accommodating language. There are lots of bold words in English. And they have they have assimilated them into the language so much so that you might think that they are English words, but they are not. Like biscuit is originally a French word. Okay, chef. And then there are so many of them which are Italian, Latin, and even French because of their history. At a point in time, England, uh, England was conquered by French Normans. Okay, so you know in their in their government and religious setup and other places you had to speak French or, you know, inculcate the French culture into the English language. That's how come there are so many borrowed words from French into English and so on and so forth. Okay, so for instance, when you say regime, in English we have regime, right? But it has a different meaning in French. So what do you think it is? Okay. means tight. So je pense que je dois faire un régime. Like now he is indoors, he doesn't move a lot. So definitely when you are at one place, you are going to put on weight, right? So he's thinking of, you know, yes, being on a diet and then j'ai besoin de voir a nutritionist, okay? To see a nutritionist or a dietitian, if you want to put it in the context, a dietitian. Je dois aussi faire Du sport, okay? You know, have, he has to train, exercise. And then, je, je, uh, mais je n'ai pas le temps. But I don't have the time. So that's basically what the reading is about. So you notice that the person has told us a lot about himself, right? And you notice when he was presenting himself, he used the verbs in the present tense. It's just some few verbs that uh, show the past, like avant j'habite à habiter okay the simple past all right but generally you realize that all the verbs are in the present tense negation of the verbs they are very very important you're going to meet some of them in the exams yes so please take note of that conjugation of verbs in the present tense you meet some of them it does not mean that you see verb at me everything like they are going to come in different forms especially the er verbs that we have learned Je regarde, from the verb, regarder. Have you seen the, the spelling? We have learned how to do that. Shortly, we are going to revise that soon, okay? So, um, we are going to ask some few questions and then we proceed. Comment s'appelle l'hôtel ou bien le locuteur du texte? Yes. What was the name of the speaker, the one who just told as who he is or give us an information about himself. Okay, I can see new hands up. Comment s'appelle l'auteur ou bien le locuteur du texte? Pierre Bernard. Okay, so remember I said you shouldn't give me answers like that. You use a part of the question. Comment s'appelle l'auteur ou bien le locuteur du texte? You can either say, il s'appelle Pierre Bernard ou bien le locuteur du texte s'appelle Pierre Bernard. Ou bien l'auteur du texte s'appelle Pierre Bernard. Or simply, il s'appelle Pierre Bernard, okay? Then your answer is complete. Quel âge a-t-il? Quel âge a-t-il? Il a 20 ans. Il a 20 ans. Il a 
Ventan. So he told us from the beginning, isn't it? Yes. So as simple as that. And then the next one is, even the answer is there, isn't it? The next one, you will not have the answer. Okay. <laughs> Tell us on the CV. Yes. You understand what the CV is? Yes. Il est marié. And dans le cas contraire, on peut dire il est célibataire. Okay. I was saying that uh, on the contrary, if he wasn't married, they would have said he is what? He is single. Okay. Il est célibataire. Then the next question is, quelle est sa nationalité? The Belge, okay, in the Belge. And then the next one, qu'est-ce que Pierre aime faire? He told us a lot of things he likes doing. So you don't have to say all the things. At least if you cite any two of the things he likes doing, it's okay. So who wants to answer that question? Imelda? so these are just examples he told us other things he likes doing you can cite some of them who, who remembers what he likes doing apart from the the ones i cited yes he likes going to the bar yeah so say it in french okay. don't be scared all right, qu'est-ce que Pierre doit faire? Qu'est-ce que Pierre doit faire? Doit is from the verb devoir. What must he do? Okay, he told us at the end that he has to do certain things. So cite one of them. Yes, I remember this face. You need to go and see. Please repeat it. Repeat it. It was a little The nutrition is the same thing. That is what it is. Okay. Yes. Anybody else? The answers are even on the board, isn't it? There are other ones. Il doit faire un régime et aussi faire du sport. So that's that he has to what, exercise and also what, yes, to be on diet or go on a diet. Okay. So these are some examples of questions you might come across from what? A comprehension test, which is, which is about what? Self-introduction. So this is another reading. This one is very short. Okay, it's, it's somebody who is going to tell us about his friend. So you're going to just use this and then tell us about somebody you have met in this class for the past six weeks. You didn't know yourselves, right? It is here you came to meet somebody. So you're going to tell us... Let me give you an example, okay? 
They represent mommy and me. Look at how the ami is spelled. It means that the, my best friend is a male, okay? Yes. Il s'appelle Bobby. Il a 20 ans. Il, il est français. Il habite à uh, Otogo, par exemple. Il est mécanicien. As simple as that, isn't it? If I want to add other information, I can add it. Il est mécanicien et puis un étudiant à l'Université de Togo. Il aime jouer euh, euh, au football. Il n'aime pas euh, euh, le tennis. Il aime manger du riz avec la sauce des tomates. Il veut être euh, un informaticien à l'avenir. OK, so these are some examples. I'm not saying that you should add all those things I just added. But at least these five in, in, uh, pieces of information give us responses to them. Okay, so tell us about your best friend. Je vous présente mon meilleur ami. Il s'appelle Eric. Il a 14 ans. Yes. But you have a problem with it. <laughs> Il est Ghanien. Il habite Kassoua. Il habite Kassoua. Il habite à Kassoua. Il est chauffeur. All right, anybody else? Last two people, and then we go to the next one. Yes. Je vous présente mon meilleur ami. Elle s'appelle Emilita. Elle a 20 ans. Elle est chinoise. Euh, mon meilleur ami s'appelle Desmond. Euh, il a euh, 64 ans. Il est gagné. Il habite à Kra. Il est musicien. You heard him, right? Oh, he said his best friend's name is Desmond. Et puis, la quel âge? 64 ans. 64 years old. That's his friend's age. Yes, we have friends that are older, very older than us. Yes. So it's, it's very, yes. Uh, and then uh, he said he is what? He's Ghanaian, oh? Yeah. And he's a musician. Okay. Somebody wants to say. Uh, okay, last person. Because I want us to do the revision quickly. Il s'appelle. Je vous présente mon miel. Mon miel ami. Mon miel. Mais. Miel ami. Il s'appelle Théodore. Il sont 30 ans. Il a 30 ans. 30 ans. Il est France. France, français. Il est français. Il est français. Il il habite à um, Dodoa. Il est um, professeur. Very good. 
you've tried. Okay, let's go to the next one. This time around, somebody is going to present a female friend for us. Je vous présente ma meilleure amie. Elle s'appelle Melody. Elle a, elle a um, 35, 35 ans. Elle est Ghanienne. Elle habite à East Legon Hills. Elle est um, education, an educationist. No, she's overseas. She's not a teacher. Okay, so let's let's do with the teacher. So LF professor. All right. So um, this is just for practice. Okay, in 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 French, how to introduce someone other than yourself. This is how you go about it, okay? The expressions to use. It's not difficult, is it? Okay, it's very simple. So the questions as usual, you know them, all right? So that's what I have said, that we have learned all the basic things we need to know about how to present yourself or somebody else. The same expression you use in presenting yourself is the same that you use to present someone else, okay? talking about your name, your age, where you come from, where you stay, the job you do, or whether you're a student, or the things you like doing, the things you don't like doing, what you want to do in the future. These are some of the things. It doesn't necessarily mean that you should say all these things, the basic information, what you want to say. Are we okay? All right, so quickly, if do you have questions, another question, we'll go to our revision exercise quickly. I wanted to say something about this, especially the countries. When we present somebody, when we give, maybe come from France, you have to also mention the town, maybe the town that you have been is, exists in France. If not, if it's another country, mention the name of the country, not the town in the country, the other country, because people cannot know. So you must mention the name of the country, if it's a, the town is in the county, you mention the name of the town. But if it's not in the town, you mention the name of the county that the person is living. In other words, he's just trying to say that, okay, you come from maybe, uh, maybe you are French, okay, je suis français. Okay, j'habite à Paris ou bien à Toulouse ou bien je viens de Strasbourg, for instance, like say the, the town, okay, for instance whether it's in the same country where you come from or any other place, you have to let us know. Okay, just for precision's sake, not anything. A question? Yes, Madam, um, for the French passage that you gave, I want to ask if in French, the arrangement is important. Because when you saw the beginning, he mentioned his age, and then he mentioned, I think, where he's from, or before he came to mention the day he was born. Is that acceptable, or you can arrange any how you want to friend? So he's talking about the chronology. It's chronology is important, okay, but where the date of birth is, is it doesn't spoil anything. It's still in the same. Uh, what is it? Category, the same paragraph. It's where to be at the very end, that one needs to be inacceptable, but at least it's closer to where he talked about his age and then all those things. Okay. If you are speaking, if you are introducing, if you are introducing yourself orally, maybe to see, uh, in an informal way, that one chronology doesn't really matter, but in a written, you know, work, chronology is very important. All right, so without any further questions, let's do our revision quickly. Make sure you ask questions, okay? But we will not dwell on them because it's five and we need to be fast about it, okay? Because this is our last week.
So remember that in our first week, we looked at what articles. Please let's pay at attention. As and when I'm talking about the things we are going, we are revising, I will tell you what you are supposed to expect. Expect questions on articles in the exams, about 10 of them. Expect questions from there. Definite articles, indefinite articles, and what partitive article, articles. Questions are definitely going to come, so please revise very well, okay? What you need to know about articles, first of all, you need to know that there are three main types of articles in French. They are a type of determinants. A pulezatic, defini, definite articles. The name speaks for itself, defines, it makes what? It, it modifies specific things or objects or people or whatever it is. Definite articles. So the boy, it's definite. We know which particular boy. But in English, we have only one definite article. Whereas in French, we have four of them, okay? Basically, there are three, but let's say there are four in some cases. The first one is what we are revising. Yes. Le, la, le. The reason I said there is a fourth one is because, remember we said there are some nouns that begin with what? Vowels or ash, mien. Okay, when you say ash me, silent H. And so when you are modifying them with definite articles, then what? You need to be able to what? Use this L apostrophe to modify them. Okay, so for instance, um, can one of the, uh, or oh, if we draw the projectors, everything is going to go. Okay, don't worry, I will still demonstrate. So for instance, when we say anana, and then that begins with what a vowel. Ah. So you not say, though it is a masculine now, you not say le anana. No. La nana. We are going to take the E off and then add A N A S. A N A N A S. Okay. La nana. La nana e do. The pineapple is sweet. Okay. That's why I wanted one of the. Um, What I'm trying to say is that what? Let's take it one by one. Definite articles modify what? Definite things, especially when we know that uh, the thing, okay? It's, it modifies specific things or persons or places or ideas or whatever it is. That is why we said definite article. And there's a tick definite. So we have four of them in French. Naturally or basically it's three. But because there are some nouns that uh, begin with what? Vowels. You should know what vowels are. Basically, we have about five vowels. Uh, but we have more than them. We have some, you know, different types of sounds. Okay? The long E's, the long A's, and all. They are all vowels. But the natural vowels are five of them. Okay? And even in French, we have a fifth one. A sixth one, actually. Okay? So these are the vowels. It's dry. You can see, right? That's too well on this. But what I'm basically saying is that for definite articles, you should remember that we have le for masculine nouns. Nouns that are masculine. So you should know which nouns are masculine and which nouns are not. And when we were learning, I gave you a clue, we'll quickly come to that. And then nouns feminine, we use the article la. And then nouns that are in plural form, whether they are uh, feminine or masculine, we use le, L-E-S. And then nouns that are what? Uh, beginning with vowels or silent H, we use what L. Okay, so for instance, if I'm talking about okay, the H we don't say hospital, but it is hospital. I'm going to 
hospital. So we we'll use L apostrophe. Okay, not le hospital. Hospital is a masculine now, but we will not say le hospital, but l'hôpital, because hospital begins with what? A second age. And in transcription, try to transcribe a word according to the phonology, the phonetics. It actually begins with what? How o. It is for this thing we use an apostrophe. Okay, for instance, l'hôtel. Lugar era al hotel. Lugar era al hotel. So the guy or the boy is in the hotel. So the H is silent. So we say l'hotel. Okay. And then we have avion. So l'avion. Okay. Because it's beginning with what? A vowel. It becomes plural. Then we we'll use le. Okay, so it becomes what? Les hôpitaux. Okay, les hôtels. Uh, les avions. So you realize that for the plural form, we don't change anything. Okay, already there is an S here, so there is no vowel or any H silent, silent H anywhere. So we use the plural just like it is. And then make sure the nouns are also plural. Okay, the plural for hospital is opito. Okay, are you here with me? Yeah. All right. And then we said what? Le is for what? Masculine now. So examples are? Le garçon, right? And, and then le, le vélo, vélo is bicycle. All right, and then what? Yes, there are so many of them. Okay, so please, I'm going to revise the slides or the videos. Hospital is not a feminine noun. It is a masculine noun, it does not change. Okay, so we don't have a feminine form for hospital. It is always a masculine noun. But in, in this case, it's beginning with what? A, a, a silent H, and the next, uh, the next sound that follows is a vowel. It is for this reason we use what L apostrophe. So when you see the examples in there, so you can see the examples in the table. Okay, so many of them with all the cases and the sentences kindly read over. So you just have to you know. Make sure that your vocabulary is rich and then you have to be very analytical. Don't take things for granted. When you are reading the sentence, make sure that you see that most of the time, even in French and in English, the syntax, when we say syntax, the word order of words, the order of words follows an SVO format naturally. When we say SVO, subject, verb, object, or subject, verb, adjunct, and the rest. Okay, so definitely you know that the first element you will see in a sentence will be what? A subject. And most of the time, some of the subjects, they don't come in what? Pronouns. They come in full what? Nouns. Okay, sometimes it can be a, a, a single noun or a plural noun. Okay, and you should know how to be able to use the definite articles to modify them. Okay, so for instance, I can write... Okay, we've not come there. We saw this word uh, just now. Okay, so now you realize that this is the S. Okay, S, V, and this is this the prepositions and all that. And then O, oh, okay. So now, heart is a feminine noun in the plural form. What definite article will we put here? Somebody is saying that. Please, in French, I just want to give you a piece of advice. Honestly, honestly, the questions are very simple. We have made it very easy and direct. 
But because you don't really understand the language, if you jump into conclusions, you will fail. So take your time. We've been given two hours to answer them. Take your time. Make sure that you analyze. Don't take things for granted or you know jump into conclusion. Analyze. That is why I said what? First, study the subjects. What are features of a subject, especially when it is plural? You realize that there is an S, isn't it? It's only in few cases where there's, it will be in singular form, but it is still ending with S. Okay, so you realize that if it were to be singular, there will be no S here. And this is, and I told you that normally nouns, most nouns in French end with E, which are feminine. But there are some nouns that end with E, but they are not feminine. They are masculine. Okay, but most of the time when they end with E, it is a feminine noun. So this is a feminine noun, but it is in the plural form. So what definite article will we use here? Yes. Okay, le, L-E-S, le quatre. So this is a, a sentence, so le quatre sont sur la table. The cats are on the table. Okay, then your answer is correct. If you use la quatre, it's wrong. If you use le quatre, L-E, it's wrong. If you use L apostrophe, it's wrong. So study the subjects very well, especially when you go to the session where you said what? Fill in the blank spaces with the right article. Study the what? Subjects. So you ask yourself, where is the subject? And I'm giving you a clue that most times in French and in, even in English, the normal word order in a sentence, subjects begin what? The, what is it? The sentence. Unlike in some languages like Portuguese, Okay, uh, Portuguese, Spanish, and some languages, they are verb inflicted languages. When we say verb inflicted languages, it means that these languages normally begin with verbs. Unlike in English, where naturally, most of the time they begin with nouns, okay, or pronouns. There are rare cases where, for stylistic purposes, they will try to do inversion. Inversion means you are changing the word order of what the sentence to begin with an adjective or a verb, beautiful she is. That is not a normal word, uh, word order in English, isn't it? But for stylistic purposes, just to attract the reader's, reader's attention. Create, uh, putting what? Emphasis on what the adjective beautiful. It is for this reason the order has been changed. Normally the word order should be what? She is beautiful. But we said what beautiful she is. It's not a normal word order, but it is not wrong either. But the normal word or the pronouns, then the verb, or nouns and the verb and the object and what have you. Okay, so I'm just giving you a clue that when you see a sentence, the first element can be one or two or three. They are the subjects, and then the verb continues, and then the what have you. Are we, are we okay? So let's move on to the next point. So then we have what? Indefinite articles. We have what? Eh? Yeah. You said uh, uh, word of maison. Why that is la maison is not le maison? Because maison is a feminine noun. So we say la maison. The moment you say le maison, it is wrong. Maison is not a masculine noun. That's what you didn't hear. Please don't take my word out of context. Did you hear him? He said that I said what? Feminine words end with E. What did I say? Most of the time. Or, I don't want to even say most again. Sometimes, okay, but most of the time, feminine words uh, in, in French ends with E. There are so many, okay? Or U-D-E, okay? Or uh, I-L-L-E, they are feminine nouns. We have a lot of them. I didn't take you through because there are a whole lot of lists, okay? And then there are some cases where they do not end with what? E or I-L-L-E or I-S-E or S-E or U-D-E. They are feminine nouns, okay? But there are some that do not end with E and all these endings, but they are feminine nouns, just like maison, okay? 
It ends with what? O-N, but it is a feminine noun. That's why I said, for now, you have to learn them. In French, you have to know the verb at him label. There's no two ways about it. If you don't read, you will not know. And when you read uh, sentences in French, look for the meaning of words, look for their words, their gender. In French, words are what? Gender inflated. It means that every word in French has a gender. Every word. And there are some few words that are invariable. When you say invariable, they can be used for both feminine and what? Masculine. All right. But most, almost all the words in French have, are either feminine or masculine. In few cases where you can use what? Some of the words of both feminine and what? Masculine nouns at the same time without altering it. So when you say la maison, okay, it is a feminine noun. If it is plural, then you say la maison, okay? And then garçon, garçon is a masculine noun. It ends with O-N. It's not a feminine noun. And even the word itself gives it out, boy. So it can never be a feminine noun. Fee, there's some words naturally, you know the meaning and you know that it's a feminine noun. Farm, woman, you, can, you cannot say that it's a masculine noun. Okay. All right. And then we have indefinite articles, un, queen, the. So un is used for masculine nouns. Queen, feminine nouns, and their plural nouns, whether they are feminine or masculine or a mixture of both. Okay. And then we have some examples as you can see. So, voir. Okay, let's look at the masculine aspect. Bijou is a, fem a masculine noun. Animal, masculine noun. Jardin, masculine noun. Je, masculine noun. There are so many of them. Okay. Tableau, en tableau, masculine noun. And mule, masculine noun. Then for feminine nouns, we have what? Voix. Voix, voice, feminine noun. Task, feminine noun. Penet, farm. The, so these are examples. Okay, chairs, feminine noun. Chemise, rob, feminine noun. Okay, pantalon, masculine noun. So you say what? En pantalon, une chemise. In rob, okay. Then the plural, you just add the s and then make sure you use des. Are we here? Some of you are going to Canada because that that place is cold. So, but if you are in Ghana, you cannot sleep. So please, I want you to be in Ghana. Okay. And then we have partitive articles. When we say partitive, we are using it for what nouns that cannot be counted or nouns that are what absent abstract or great quantity, and you cannot what, count them at that particular moment, you use the partitive articles. We have du for masculine nouns, de la for feminine nouns, and then de le for both feminine and masculine nouns, that begin with what, vowels and what, silent H. And then the plural form is de. You realize that indefinite articles, we have de. Partitive articles we have there for the plural forms, but they are different in depending on the word, the context. All right. So for G, let's look at examples of masculine nouns that are uncountable or, or what? Or great quantity or abstract. So we have what examples. Vin, wine, du vin, it's a masculine noun. Du riz, rice is a masculine noun. Rice. Du sel, salt. Du sucre, sugar. Okay, sugar.
So these are some examples. There are so many words now that are uncountable, okay, and they are masculine, and then you want to what? Modify them with partitive articles. We have what? Du soup, sugar. J'aime du soup. I love sugar, or I like sugar. Du café. J'aime du café au lait. I like what? Coffee with milk. Du lait, milk. Du sable, sand. Du thé, tea. Du sel, salt. So these are masculine nouns, and you have to modify them with what? Part, uh, these partitive articles, which are singular, okay? And then we have, but we are not, naturally, we are not saying that, okay, salt is a singular noun, so you say a sand, no. But sand, or some sand, or some, what, some milk, some co coffee, or some sugar, some tea, some more salt. This, that's what it literally means. And then for feminine nouns, okay, we use de la, okay? So you look at some examples on the board, we have what? Uh, de la pluie, and la musique. Music is what? Uh, it's an abstract idea, isn't it? You cannot touch music, but you can feel it, you can hear it, okay? De la chance, luck, okay? Uh, la bon, uh, what is it? Du bonheur. Du is for masculine, so bonheur, like uh, what is it? Uh, goodness or you know, uh, happiness. We and then we have for the contracted form, we have de lui. So you see that oil is what beginning with H, silent H. So we don't say de la huile, but we say de l'huile, de l'air, de l'argent. Aja is beginning with what? A, a, a vowel. And so we we'll not say de l'aja, but we we'll say what? De l'aja. With what? Apostrophe there. Please, can you see? Yes. So we have so many examples. All right. So you just have to study the words. The subject. First, you ask yourself this subject, does it begin with a vowel or a silent H? Or it's just beginning with consonants? Then you ask yourself, is the is the subject what a partitive entity or it is just a countable what entity or non-countable is it feminine is it masculine is it plural these are the questions you ask yourself and analyze it before you choose your word answer okay so for instance uh don't want dash agent don't want dash agent will you say and then the answers are don't want uh more a a is what more b is what the with what apostrophe and then the c is what de la de la then you add aja and then d is what uh de d e s which one will you choose b okay l'argent don't want l'argent give me some money okay more is what a possessive pronoun which is wrong give me my money we are not talking about possessive pronouns. We are talking about articles. So read the instruction. Reading instructions in exams are very important. Okay? And then you have to analyze the sentences before you choose your answers. Don't be quick. Sweet. Make sure you put all the answers in the, in the space. And what? As you are putting the answers in the space, you are matching what? The answer with the subject to see if it really matches with it, if it really modifies it. Before you choose what your answer. If you see the first one, say, oh, this is the answer. Maybe it was just deceptive. The real answer is D because they made it look similar. So don't be in a rush to choose the first answer. Go use all the answers in this word. Empty space in the blank space and see which one really fits what the subject before you pick your answer. So these are some examples. We are going to the next slide, okay? You make sure you go and read or you go and listen to the videos. Then we go to lesson two. So for lesson two, as you can see, it's about what nouns, common nouns, proper nouns, and the rest. And this is to help you to what? Um, identify what? Uh, 
the, the gender of the nouns and it was number. Okay, we treated this lesson because we want to know if a noun is feminine or masculine or whether it is plural and what articles we can use to modify them. So when we say common nouns, we know what common nouns are, all right? We can see some examples on the board. And we say, for instance, fear. If it is what? Um, feminine singular, we'll say what? Queen fee. For instance, if it is talking about a girl we don't know, not specific, a girl. If it is specific, then we'll say la fee. And remember that fee is what? A feminine noun. If it's if you use le fee, you should know that you are getting it wrong in the first place. Okay, so you should know what fee means. It means what girl fee. And then if it is plural, you either use le fee or the fee, depending on the context. So you just have to look at the possible answers or the, the multiple choice answers and then know which one suits the question. And then what? She is a masculine noun. And in this context, you realize that there's no S here. So you say ancient or le chien. But you realize that this one, there is S here, so it means it's plural. So you say what? Le chien ou bien de chien, depending. And you will not have a question where all the two are there. Unless maybe the instruction says what? Choose the right definite article to fill in what? The, to fill in the blank spaces. Then if I bring there, there is wrong because it's not a definite article, but it is what? An indefinite article. So I have to choose le. So it's all about what? The instruction. Read the instruction. We have made the instruction in such, way, in such a way that it's both in French and in English. So you read the instruction in French, you read the English version, know what you are asked to do, okay? But for the sentences, you will not have them in English. They are all in French. But they are simple sentences. You just have to take your time to read, identify the subject, identify the verb. The object is not really a, sub, a subject, a matter of concern. It's the subject and the verb that you really need to know the distinction. Okay? And look at the words. The other examples. So, un garçon, le garçon, le garçon, the garçon, la femme, une femme, the farm, la chaussure, the chaussure. Chaussure is what sh um, shoe or shoes. Okay, and then we realize that the partitive articles, du sucre, de la viande, viande is meat, the viande, okay, the palm, the lair. So these are some examples and how, you've seen how we have been able to use the articles to modify the nouns to show the distinctions, either feminine, masculine, or plural. Are we okay? So please make it a point to go and watch all the videos um, during what your revision week. Read the videos, know the meaning of the words. Okay, look at them and to see whether they are singular or uh, what? Um, plural or masculine or what? Feminine. So when you look at what? Um, so when we talk about proper nouns, we have some examples in there. Okay, proper nouns, as we know, names of places, names, the real names of places, of people, or in, of institutions, and so on and so forth. Then we talk about what compound nouns, we have what? Examples in there. So please go and read them. Go and read them. What is important is that you should be able to know what the endings whether some, so when you look at the current slide, for instance, if you want to make a noun plural, there are some that you add S to it, or there are some that what you add uh, AUX or EUX, or uh, what is it, so on and so forth. But we, we restricted what the lesson to this aspect that if nouns that already end with S, or X or Z. These nouns, you don't add anything to them again. They remain the same in the plural form. For instance, du ne, N E Z, ne. Okay, j'ai un ne. Vous avez des ne. 
You have no sense. It's the same N E Z. We don't add S or E S to it. It is invariable in the plural, in the singular form. Okay. Or for instance, if I say, uh, je fais des pas. Okay, I'm making steps. P A S. It is in the plural form. Je fais un pas. I made a step. P A S. The same word. Spelling, no change. So it is invariable in the plural and singular form. And then we have what? Chateau. J'habite dans un chateau. I stay in a castle or I live in a castle. Chateau, it ends with what? A U. And nous habitons dans, un, uh, dans les châteaux. We live in castles. A U X to show the plural form. Okay. And then fire, singular. Uh, plural form is what e u x so when you see nouns like this a u the plural form you will see that they've added what x to it so these are some examples to show that such nouns that end with s x and z they remain invariable both in singular and plural form but what will determine that they are plural or singular is what the article so when I say a chateau, you know that's what? It is singular. Le chateau, it is plural. Le feu, it is plural. Le feu, it is what? Singular. So it is the article that is going to help you. And we are learning this because it is going to take us to our next lesson, which is what? Verbs. The nature of the subject, singular or plural, will determine how the conjugation of the verb will be. For instance, so let's go to the next lesson quickly. So for, for verbs, remember that what? We only focused on what? ER verbs, verbs that end with what ER. When you look at their infinitives, they end with what ER. But before we look at that, we what? Learn the conjugation of what auxiliary verbs in English. Et, a, a, in French, et and what avoir. Et is what to be. We learned it because in what? In French grammar, you always see the use of et in almost every they life what expression so we need to know how it is conjugated in french and so we said what the conjugation of et which means what to be this is the conjugation je suis tu es il est elle est nous sommes vous êtes look at the spelling and look at how the heart has been put on the e without the heart it is wrong il sont elle sont this is the spelling for what or the conjugations for et Please, those who are going to Canada, come back. <laughs> all right, so please, you're almost done, all right? I just want you to, I would just want to help with your revision. You, you should have done this on your own, but I just want you to get some salient points right. Now, remember, it is not, you're not going to see these pronouns throughout. You are going to see real nouns. For instance, I say, ma mère et moi. Ma mère et moi. Ma mère et moi. Ok. Use, we are using edge. Okay, so my mère et moi dash intelligent. Okay, this subject is it singular or plural subject? And what pronoun will you use to replace it? Ma mère et moi, what subject, what pronoun will you use to replace it? 
No. My mother, my mother and myself. So I'm part of the subjects now. So the, the, the pronoun that replaces it is was no, not and. It's not a third person. So far as the person speaking is inclusive in the subjects, you use we. Okay, so for instance, maybe you will see it and then you say no some. Okay. Intelligent. intelligent. You are not going to say some. Okay, so that is why the subject analysis is very important. It is what is going to help you to get the right answer. Or I can say, Jude et toi. Dash tattoo. Jude and you are stubborn. <laughs> Jude and you. Toi, when the time you say tu, you see toi, okay, it is you, okay. But the toi here has been used in what? In the, uh, what is the, the, you know, we have for personal pronouns, we have the subject and the object form of personal pronouns. Okay, so this, is it a plural or singular subject? So what pronoun will you use to replace it? Vu, okay. So I'm talking to said Jude et toi. Vous êtes tu, okay. So what I've really said the verb. What verb will you use? Et. Okay, Jude et toi ex tu. You're not going to say Jude et toi sans tu. So you have to be careful of these subjects. That is why I said you are not always going to see, okay, vous êtes tétu tout directement comme ça. Vous allez voir les autres types de, what, uh, de sujets. You are going to uh, look or see what other types of subjects. Are we okay? And then the same with avoir. Okay, j'ai, tu as, look at the spelling. Il a, elle a, nous avons, vous avez. Ils ont, elles ont. So I can say, Amma e equia on the jolly rob. So you know that Amma e equa, the plural. So this is the a clue. If you want, if you are reading a sentence and you see that nouns, real nouns have been used, names of people have been used, try and replace the names of the people with what? A pronoun. These are the pronouns in French. Je, okay, je, tu, il, elle, nous, vous. Il, L, these are the pronouns, okay? They are not the pronouns. I, you, he, she, these two can also represent what it. We, you, plural, il, and they. Okay, they. So please. Okay, somebody wants to ask a question. Please, madam, uh, with the tendencies you just made using uh, the mame and then the Jude et toi. Uh, the mame one, you added the nu son, nu and the song. But on the second one, you just use, uh, uh, you, you omitted the, yes. I brought nu because I just wanted to help you. There are some cases you will not see the pronoun there. Yes, my man is more some intelligent. Okay, it's not some, but some. Because I, my mother and I, am inclusive in the subject. So the that is supposed to be used is some, not some, because it's not a third person speaking, third person plural I'm referring to, but the first person plural I am referring to, and I'm inclusive. I'm, the new there, I'm just giving you a clue that to know what verb to use. Because they are not even see the nu. And you will not even see vous. But they will say Jude et toi. You will not see vous to even help you to. The vous and the nu I brought is to help you to know which verb to choose. So that you will not make a mistake and say, okay, Jude et toi. Then you write son, which is wrong. But what? X. I hope you are okay. Yes. So I was saying earlier that. 
Subject analysis is very important and it runs through all the about 40 questions you are going to answer. They are all objectives. Even for what the comprehension is objective. We have made it easier for you. So you're not going to write. Yes. So please, you don't have an excuse to fail. You are all afraid of French. But please, you do not have an excuse to fail. And I'll be very sad if I don't see you next year in January. Okay. I'm very optimistic to see all of you here in full-time students. Okay, so please, you don't have an excuse. Please. And you need to be attentive. For French, hello, listen, please. I'm very, very passionate when it comes to, for French, if you are not alert, you will get it wrong. Even for those who are francophones or even French, if you are not very alert, you will get a lot of things wrong. So very, be very alert. They are very simple sentences, I, I tell you. You will come out next week, ninth, and tell me, next two weeks, ninth, and tell me, oh, it was Coco. Especially if you learn. It's not difficult, seriously. The, even for the comprehension passage, it's just two paragraphs or so. I don't really remember. I'm not the person who really said it. So you know we have examiners. And then, yeah. yeah, 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 it's true. Oh, but. You know we have different examiner going to examine. Yes, during orientation, you were told. So please. But be scared that okay, because the examiner didn't teach you, you are going to get difficult questions. No. Be very much rest assured. The examiner of we work together. So what I have taught you basically things that you are going to see, but in different wordings. Very simple. Okay. So please. I'm very passionate about the fact that what you need to analyze the subjects. It's the same for articles. If you don't analyze the subject, you choose the wrong word, article. For the verbs too, if you don't analyze the verb, I mean the subject, you will choose a wrong verb conjugation. Okay? So that is basically that. Let's look at quickly. Uh, let me see the time we have our... You're supposed to close at 12.15, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, so we said what? Our focus was on what? ER verbs. We have regular verbs and irregular verbs in French. For regular verbs, the reason why we characterize it as such is because they have a consistent pattern. Their endings, the ending of the verbs or of the conjugation of the verbs have a consistent pattern, a regular pattern. It is for this reason that we characterize them as what? Regular verbs. We have so many regular verbs in French. We have ER regular verbs, IR regular verbs, RE regular verbs. But our focus was on what? ER verbs. It means that when we say ER verbs, it simply means what? The infinitive of the verb ends in what? ER. When you see the verb, the infinitive, you see that E and R are ending words, the verb. For instance, I say, regarde. Vous, eh, vous me regarde. You are looking at me. Regarde. So, regarde is an ER verb because it ends with ER. R E G A R D E R. So, if, for instance, I have the verb regarde and I want to conjugate it, or I have a question that has been given to me and then what is the verb that is in bracket is regarde. How would I be able to choose the right conjugation? It all boils down the subject. So you ask yourself, is the subject a pronoun? If it is not, if it is a pronoun, it is easy because we have the pronouns here. If it is not a pronoun, you ask yourself, okay, it is a noun. This noun, is it a first person singular noun? Second person singular noun? First person, uh, first, third person singular noun? Or first person plural noun? Or second person plural noun, or third person plural noun. You need to know the persons when it comes to pronouns. This is first person plural, I am singular. Second person singular, you. Third person, you, L, singular. No, we. Okay, first person what? Plural. I'm inclusive. We, we are in class. Vous is what? Second person plural, you. And then 
il de. It means that it is not referring to any, any one of us, but some people. Okay. So you need to understand what the nouns, and then you, to help you conjugate the verbs, you can replace the nouns with what? A pronoun. For instance, you will see Kofi e ama dash la tele. The verb is regarde. Kofi and ama are watching TV. Okay? And the verb is regarde. What uh, conjugation will you use? Je regarde, tu regardes, il regarde, nous regardons, vous regardez, il regarde. Which one will you use? Il regarde. What will be the spelling? R E G A R D. Not complete. The subject is plural. Kofi and Ama, isn't it? So what will you use? You have forgotten your conjugation. R E G A R D E N T. Exactly. Okay. So let's. It, it takes us to our endings. Je parle. We are using parler, for instance. Okay. All these are er verbs. If you want to conjugate the verb, remove the ending er. Remove it away. Take it away. Then leave what the roots of the verb. Parle. Manage, M, firm, leave the roots. Then you come and add all these endings to them in a what? A chronological manner to get the conjugation. So, je parle, tu parles, yes. Il parle, I, elle parle, I, nous parlons, O, N, S. Vous parlez, I, Z. Il parle, I, N, T. Elle parle, I, N, T. You see that is the same thing for this one. So je mange, eh, E S E E, then O N S. Okay, remember I said that verbs that end have what the G factor in there. Some of the verbs, okay, because of pronunciation sake, we don't say no mango. So you have to bring E to bring that word, uh, uh, flow, no mangeon. It is for this reason you see E here, not for anything. And then vous mangez, il mange, il mange. Okay, so you realize that throughout all these four verbs, they have the same endings, don't they? Yes. When we take the ending er away and we add the, the various endings to them, you will see that we have what the, the same ending throughout. So look at this. For instance, I say, um, look. Dash anglais. Which of the conjugations will I use? Il parle anglais. So you look is a, a guy, a masculine now. So you want to know what conjugation, how to conjugate it. You can replace look with what? Il. Then you, you have in your mind, okay, parler is an er verb. And then the third person conjugation ends with what? E, not es. Okay? Or I say, um, Kofi et toi, dash chinois. Kofi and you speak Chinese. Which of the conjugations will I use? Vous parlez, okay? Kofi et toi, parlez what? Chinois, vous parlez chinois. So you use this one, EZ, okay? Ama e Rita, pal, eh, eh, for espanol, okay? So you are going to use this one. So remember, you're not going to always see what pronouns, but you will see real nouns that have been used. And it is not anything to, to, to what? To scare you. You just have to replace the nouns with what? Pronouns. Okay. So these are some examples. So even when the exam comes, you don't have to know the meaning of the verb. Don't worry about the meaning of the verb. What you should know is what type of subject do I have? Singular or plural? Second person, third person, or first person plural? You should know the, the nature of the subject. Then you just proceed to what? Do the conjugations. Having in mind that ER verse, you take away the ER, 
let we are let what the root of the verb what be there then you add the word the endings according to the nature of the subject are we okay all right so i think we are almost done the last uh, the last slide is i mean the last the week four lesson two is also on verbs okay yes That's why I said I gave you a clue that normally in the exams, the way we have structured the sentences, the subject is always beginning with the sentence. Okay, so when you read, even if you don't understand the words, the meaning of words the sentence remember that the subject begins the sentence and you are not going to have only one now as a subject sometimes you have two or three or more the subject because we can have a complex subject or what a very simple subject which is only one entity or two or more depending okay anytime you see that okay a subject is plural you normally see this conjunction e a a okay a means end Okay, So you realize that the subject is plural. All right. The dog and the cat. So you realize that the subject is plural. Okay, the dog and the cat are sober. Le chien et le chat sont têtu. Il sont têtu. So you're going to use some, not what some, or il est têtu. No. Okay, you just have to analyze the subject. And I'm saying that, remember the subject will always begin what? The sentence. You have to read the instruction first. That is important. So these are some examples of what? Verbs. So you realize that, for instance, maybe you can have in an exams, uh, if you don't see what? The ashte, just by what? Then no, you can see it at the end of the sentence in a bracket. It means that the verbs in the brackets, brackets, you are going to conjugate them to fill the sentence. So remember, you are going to have sentences about ten of them, or I don't know. But what you should do is okay. No, no is for first person plural. We then we know that for ashete, which is the infinity, I will take ashes. Then I'll add what I know that first person plural, the ending for it is what O N S. Then I add O N S to it. So nous achetons the legume the free. Oh marché. Marché is what market. You see the accent on it. Uh -huh. I want to bring your mind to this. Marché is what market. And then we have what? You see, it is pronounced like this. So and then we have another verb. We have another verb that has the same pronunciation. Okay, which is what? Marche, which means, who can tell us? To walk. Eh? Je marche à la maison. Eh? C'est-à-dire, je fais, eh, je fais des pas ou des papiers. Okay, I'm walking with my legs. Pied. Pied is what? Your feet or your legs. Okay. So if you marche to walk with your face, not to, you know, to go for a ride in a car or whatever. It has the same pronunciation, marche, marche. But this one with the accent without R is what market. And the one with what R, E, R is what a verb, marche, which means to walk. Je marche. Tu marche. So you realize that this is the root of the verb. And then I'm going to add what? The, the endings. Il or L marsh. This is the root. Then I add the ending. Then nu marsh. This is the root of the verb. Then I have O N S. Okay. And then vu. This is the root of the verb. And I add E Z. Then il plural. L. Then I add what? The root of the verb E N T. So all E and verbs, you just have to take the roots, okay? And 
we have what? The endings. Please remember that some of the verbs they are ER verbs, but they are what? Accent sensitive. It means that when you are conjugating them, you have to put some accents on them. Like, for instance, you say Amene. Amene means bring, but it depends on the context. In the infinity form, it has no accent. But when I'm con conjugating it, Jamen, the accent, the sound graph comes like this. Tu amen. Tu amen. Then il, tu amen, then there's no accent. Il, el, amen, there's an accent like this, a sound graph. Nous amenons, no accent. Vous amenez, no accent. Amenez. And then il, or oh, el, plural, amen, there's an accent. Then y and t. Just like you learned about semi, jene, and all that. Okay. So, as you can see, there are some examples in there. And then we go to the last slide, which is also about, I mean, the last week. Oh, we call, we call. Okay. So, before is about basically what subject verb agreement. So, the subject verb agreement is still embedded in what? The conjugation of the verbs. If you have the right subject, and it means that the verb that should follow should concur or should agree with the subject, both in number and in gender, depending on the context. Okay, it's very important. So you can say, nous, eh, nous faisons, for right? eh, nous faisons. I use nous and then I use fair, eh, e -R -E. Is, is there any subject verb agreement? No. Okay, I said, for instance, Kofi et moi. Then I use son. Kofi et moi, son, eh, son. Let me see. Let's say I'm a guy. Okay. Kofi et moi, son, bo. Is it correct? It should be some. S O M M E S. Then there is something there. Agreement. Okay. So the third and the week four lessons are what? Are intertwined. The conjugation of the verb to what? Agree with the subjects in number and in gender. Are we okay? So please go and read over. Go and watch the videos. Okay? The exercises we have done, they are all going to be what? Featuring the exams. Not in the same way, but remember you are going to have session A and session B. Session C. Session A is the comprehension, which have about five questions or so, where you, it's multiple choice. Read the comprehension, even if you don't understand. One thing I want to assure, one thing I want to, uh, uh, what is it, comfort you with this. When you see the question, don't be scared. Don't panic. If you panic, it's the first point of failure. I'm telling you. Our minds are very powerful. The moment you start panicking, it is always you. You're thinking what capacity and you get a lot of things wrong. Be confident. All right? Don't be afraid. We know your level. And we are not going to intimidate you with difficult things. This is just an entry exam. So we really want you to be a part of us. We just want you to know, refreshing your mind from what you have already learned so many years ago. So don't be worried, don't be scared, just be confident, read well, analyze, don't take anything for granted. Don't read meanings into it. Read what you see, answer what you see. You see. Don't go and think about something you have learned and all that trying to you know, bring your own ideas and attach to it. No. Examination paper is a tool. You might have learned so much, but you don't read instructions and focus on what is before you, you fail. All right, so session A is for comprehension about five questions, two paragraphs you read. Then the question, the answers are even what reflected in the in the comprehension passage. So you just have to, you know, use your mind, logic. You read question one says this. We have four or three words, possible choice answers. Read the answers and then put each and every answer in the word space provider to see which one really is appropriate and check each part of the paragraph where you can see such a similar answer. Okay, and you get the clue. Session B are there. I said all of them are objectives, okay? And then session B is what? 
I don't know what is there, but she thinks about what you have learned. Articles, uh, verbs, okay, giving pronouns, we are not going to, uh, what is it, uh, bother you with that. But you have to learn it because nouns and the articles will go hand in hand. And then the verbs especially, you have a lot of questions on verbs. You have multiple choice questions where you are supposed to choose the right conjugation. And you have a set of what questions where you are supposed to conjugate the right verb. Okay, the verb is in brackets. Then you conjugate the right verb by looking at the subject and you put the right conjugation there. And then all the verbs are ER verbs. All of them, they are ER verbs. Okay, so I wish, do you have any questions? Any clarifications? We are done. So please. Go and read. You are lucky that you have a blended word, learning word platform where you have all the pre-recorded videos. Unlike in a traditional class where what I've said goes forever. And if you don't take notes, you have no other words, means of referring to what you have learned. So go back to the LMS platform and go and read. Who wanted to ask a question here? Well, see you believe my son? Okay. Uh, et concernant euh, ce, ce sur la tique, euh, le euh, la sur comme ça. Non. Comment est-ce que nous pourrons trouver des mots que ces mots euh, natiques euh, le ou la parce qu'il y a beaucoup de mots. Euh, Hello. Euh, plus de mots. Comment nous euh, pouvons trouver que ce mot comporte la tique le ou la. Est-ce que c'est pour ça que nous devons apprendre tout par cœur ou bien est-ce qu'il y a euh, un raccourci pour trouver que ce mot comporte le ou la? Est-ce que c'est ça? You just have the same concern like you that with regards to the articles, okay, how will you be able to know that, okay, this word corresponds with this article and not any other? That is why the learning of the nouns are very important. And we gave you a clue that for feminine nouns, most of the time they end with E. If they don't end with E, some of them end with O-N, some of them end with what? U-D-E or S-E. Or I S S E or I L L E like family, family or F E depending. Some two they are masculine nouns but they end with O N Z X or what uh, U A U and so on and so forth. But I don't want to restrict you to these endings because they vary. What you should know is that what when you read a sentence. Look at the nature of the subject. Is it singular? Is it plural? And then read. Read what? Uh, the slides or the videos you have shared with you because you are going to use what? Similar nouns that you have come across. Even if they are not similar, you just have to use your logic, pay attention, focus, look at the features. Okay? So that you can know whether to use that or look or the plural form or the participle form. Are we okay? All right. So, Without any further questions, or are there? Are there any? Okay, so it has been a very great pleasure meeting you all. Okay, so you don't remember my name, right? Yes. And the bot botanical name. So wherever you see me, you can say hello to me, all right? Yes. So my name once again is Sidata Abotimevo. I'm a, an assistant lecturer at the Institute of Languages. I teach translation theories and general translation, and sometimes to English as a second language or even French as a second language. And I hope to see you at my institute. Even if I don't see you there, I'll, I'm sure I'm going to see you at IG or IFT because we are all a family. Learn hard. You want to what? Upgrade. That is why you are here. Don't forget that. And nothing is impossible when you put your mind to it that you want to achieve it. Be, be what? Self-motivated. Don't waste the money you have paid, the transport, the things that you have spent for you to come here. Don't waste it. And don't think that because 
you are part of the mature interest, oh, automatically you will be picked. If it were so, we would not have organized these entrances and we will just admit you straight away. So don't take anything for granted. Take all the four courses we have taught you seriously. You can make it. Don't underestimate what powers your intelligence. You can make it only if you revise and learn. Okay, and I wish you all the best in the exams. Make sure that you eat healthy, rest well, be strong, be, be what? Attentive to the information on the platform so that you don't miss anything. Make sure you come here in time. We are going to treat you as a student. So if you come late, there will be penalties. Come early for the exams. All the timelines will be given to you and make sure you are there. Don't miss any. Don't bring any foreign material here. You are too big. You are too much big for that. And if you bring any foreign material, you'll be disqualified, I'm telling you. You will not be, you will not be pardoned at all. We will treat you like a real university student. And even that disqualifies you even from even entering because we take cheating very, very serious in this institution, okay? So remember that you can do it. You are capable, you are all intelligent. Nobody's daft here. You can what? Do it. So all the best and make sure that you pass all the exams and see you next year, God willing, in good health as one happy family learning with us. Thank you.